What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the Ace Magician TK11. Now this is quite a powerful Windows 11 mini PC priced around £700 and is powered by an Intel Core i5 1135G7 quad core processor clocked at 2.4 GHz and up to a 4.2 GHz turbo. For graphics, we have the integrated Intel Iris Xe with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, upgradable to a maximum of 64 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a gigabit LAN. This box also features a Thunderbolt 4 port. It's running Windows 11 Professional, supports triple 4K display output. We've got a built-in cooling fan. We've got built-in stereo speakers. And this box does apparently support up to 8K at 60 Hertz. So design wise, this is a space saving compact mini PC. Ace Magician logo on top finished in silver. We've got a power button here, which also doubles up as a fingerprint reader. On the front, we've got audio jack, two USB 3 ports, a reset hole in the middle and your Thunderbolt 4 port. If we keep going, there's nothing on this side. And on the back, we've got two more USB 3 ports. We've got an HDMI 2.1 port. We've got a DisplayPort 1.4. And we have a gigabit LAN, Kensington lock, and your power socket. If we keep going, nothing on this side. And that brings us back to the front of the box. And here is a quick look at the bottom. Now this mini PC also has a unique stereo speaker system built into the box. So you don't even have to connect external audio, which could be quite convenient. Now over here, there was a warning sticker, which I just removed and I stuck it on to the back of the package. And it just gives you a warning about the boot process. If you can't log in, this is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. Moving on, quick look at what you get inside the box. So we get a user manual. We get a VESA mount made from metal and some screws to go with it. So you can actually mount the mini PC on the back of your monitor. We've got an HDMI cable, a power supply, and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. And last but not least, the mini PC itself. A right, quick look at the internals for the Ace Magician TK11. So we've got four screws at the bottom, which I'm about to open. So here are the components that you can upgrade. Quickly mention that you've got your speaker grill here. It's got stereo speakers, but it's a different design. So you've got one grill on top and then you're going to have one underneath. So the speakers are basically back to back. So the RAM we have here is eight gigabytes per slot. So it's 16 gigs of RAM. It's DDR4 RAM. And you can see there the brand, it's called Kim Tigo. You can remove these and you can put 32 gigs per slot. So maximum supported RAM is 64 gigs. So here is your M.2 NVMe SSD drive. It's 512 gigabytes. You can remove this and install up to two terabytes, but then you would have to reinstall Windows yourself. There is another little surprise here. You can see we've got a SATA connection for a hard drive and on the lid, you can see a cage where you can install your two and a half inch SATA drive and then you would just connect it up. So yes, you can install a two and a half inch SATA drive, I believe up to four terabytes. So that was the upgrade options for the Ace Magician TK11 mini PC. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up with my TV and capture card and we're gonna find out exactly how good this mini PC really is. I'll be right back. And here we are guys. Here is the desktop for the Ace Magician TK11. And you're looking at Windows 11 Professional, offering a full PC experience in such a mini compact size. Now, first of all, let's check out the system properties. We have Windows 11 Professional. It's a 64-bit operating system. Here are the details for the processor. 11th Gen Intel Core i5. That's the 11320H. And you can see the clock speeds there. 16 gigs of RAM. And if we just go to activation, you can see it's activated and ready to use. System storage info, we have 512 gigs of internal storage from which 475 gigs are usable. And from that, we have 444 gigs free to use. So this is a clean system. I've not installed anything yet. This is what you get when you first power on. Now the second drive I've just plugged in is my 64 gig flash drive which contains all my 4K samples. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and see how the system handles. And we're gonna start off with the high pitch rate jellyfish demo. The first sample is 160 megabits per second. And as you can see, the sample's playing back pretty smooth. 
The next clip is 180 megabits per second. And you can see this video sample is also handling quite well. And the real test, 400 megabits per second. And this sample is also playing back very nicely. So high bitrate, 4K Jellyfish demos playing fine directly from USB. So now I'm playing a few 4K60 samples with various HDR formats and they all seem to be playing nicely with no stuttering or buffering issues. And all of these 4K samples are different file formats and they all work great right out of the box using the default media player. All right, so we are now moving on to YouTube streaming, starting off with the usual Costa Rica clip and YouTube does support 4K60 with HDR. like you're signing your life away. Away. What happened that night? Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I'm tired of pretending like everything is normal and it's not. All of things go back to normal. One, two, three. There, I did it for you. So next, I tested Netflix from the web browser, and for some strange reason, it won't let me stream higher than 480p resolution, according to the test patterns. But when I tested the Netflix app, which I downloaded from the Microsoft App Store, I was then able to stream in full 4K resolution. All right, so the first game we're playing is GTA 5. And we have the resolution set to 1080p. We have the graphics set to very high, and you can see we're achieving around 29 frames per second and the TDP peaking at around 26 watts. This is more or less what I expected from the Intel XE graphics. Okay, so we're trying something a bit more recent. This is a Plague Tale. We have the resolution set to 1080p and I've got the graphics preset set to low. V-Sync is off and you can see that the game is playing but not great frame rate. Only 15 frames per second average and yeah, it doesn't play that well, not as smooth. So let's drop the resolution down to 720p and we'll leave the graphics preset to low. But this should slightly improve the frame rate. As you can see, we're now achieving around 20, 21 frames per second. But the game does feel a lot smoother than before. But the minimum that I would consider playing this game is 30 frames per second, which we're not achieving even at 720p low graphics. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the gaming performance of this mini PC. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1481 and multi-core score of 5128. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 573K. And this mini PC has achieved a CPU pass mark score of 9914. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2023, allowing you to compare the price, specs and features. And the ranking is based on benchmark scores. So looking at Antutu, Geekbench and Passmark, I give it an average and the mini PC gets ranked accordingly. So as you can see, the Ace Magician TK11 has taken position 15 on this chart. Furthermore, you can view all my latest charts online and free of charge at chigstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the Ace Magician TK11. This mini PC has plenty to offer. And the real standout features for me is the fingerprint reader on the power button with that beautiful ring of light on it. You've got an easy upgrade options for SSD and RAM. This one supports triple 4K display output and you've got choice. So you've got one HDMI, one display port and one Thunderbolt 4. The internal cooling fans are effective and help keep the system running cool. And you have plenty of connectivity both on the front and the back. Performance is pretty good for everyday tasks. So it's great for general web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics, and even 4K video editing. So a nice, powerful, performing mini PC for school, college, uni, and it's a space saver.
AAA games can be played, most older titles at 1080p high graphics to achieve around 30 frames per second, or the latest titles can be played at 720p lowest graphics. But unfortunately, the Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics lack that gaming performance that we usually enjoy on the newer AMD powered mini PCs. So Iris Xe has never been my favorite choice for graphics. But the processor, however, is quite powerful and most software and applications run really well and the overall performance of the PC is quite good. Windows 11 Professional comes pre-installed and activated. So for under 400, this is not bad. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments below. Don't forget to like and sub, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.